Welcome to a new video from Elastic Course. In this video, I will show you three different ways to add a graphical user interface or GUI to your Ubuntu server. This would work best on cloud environments like AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud because most of the Linux distribution offered are only CLI based and you are not given a graphical user interface. So if you are looking to add a graphical user interface or GUI to your Linux distribution, check this video to the end. Let's get started. Now, before we get started, I also included a paste pin, including all the command used in this video, so you can easily copy and paste them in your environment. Now, I'm gonna start from the beginning and I'm gonna open a new server using the AWS EC2 console. This is where you can easily build a virtual machine in the cloud. And I'm gonna click launch instance. Now, as you see, most of these Linux distribution are all CLI based, for example, the Ubuntu server, this is CLI based. And I'm gonna go ahead with this option and I'm gonna just launch it. And instead of using the free tier, which is very limited CPU resources, once we add a graphical user interface, we would probably need more power to be able to support this added load or added overhead. So I'm gonna choose T2 medium and I recommend you choose something higher. And we're gonna also be monitoring the CPU and RAM usage to see the impact of using a GUI versus just using the bare metal or headless server. And this is just a review about the instance. And we're gonna also need to create a key pair. This allows us to log into the environment using the SSH key. So I'm gonna create a new one. I'm just gonna call it Ubuntu server. Now we're gonna download this key and launch this server. Now I made sure this server includes a public IP address so that we can reach this instance from the internet. And we're gonna now extract the key file using the solar body. Now if you don't use solar body, this is a very nice application that allow you to create templates for the SSH session you access usually. And you can also open multiple tabs in the same time. So the first thing we need to do from here is to open the generate certificate in the menu. And we're gonna load this PM file we just downloaded from the AWS console. Now, all we need to do from here is to save the private key. And I'm just gonna call it the same name, but it will be in .ppk format. Now, once we have extracted the private key, we just need to create a new session now. So we're gonna call this Ubuntu server. Now we're gonna put the public IP address of the server, which is right here. I'm gonna use the copy. Default board is 22, that is correct. And the username in this case will be Ubuntu since this is an Ubuntu distribution. And we just need to browse to the PBK file we extracted. We can also optionally enable session login, which is gonna keep a log for all the command you use. Pretty useful for troubleshooting and backlog. So I'm gonna also enable this. And now I'm gonna create this session. Now as you see, I'm able to log into the server but I don't have a graphical user interface by default. Now the first step for us is to choose a desktop environment and that depends on which Linux distribution you're trying to add a graphical user interface into. Like in our case with Ubuntu distribution, we have different desktop environments available for the system like Ubuntu desktop, Ubuntu desktop GNOME, XFCE4, or any other desktop environment you might like all of these systems will have different design and also will have different CPU and RAM usage and overhead you will add into the system. So we're gonna try the first solution in this case and we're gonna try just the Ubuntu GNOME desktop as a desktop environment. And following this, we're gonna install a VNC server and simply said VNC is similar to remote desktop in Windows. So this will allow us to run an open source VNC provider, in this case, I'm using Tiger VNC. There are many, many implementation for the VNC technology, but in this case, Tiger VNC is showing to be lightweight and also stable enough. So we're gonna be using this as example in the first method. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the first option to update the list for the operating system, which contain all the packages, all the updates. And then we're gonna go ahead and install the graphical user interface, the Ubuntu GNOME desktop. This will just add the GUI.
And once this is finished, now we have a desktop environment already installed in the system. We just need some protocol to be able to access this GUI. So now we're going to install the Tiger VNC server along with all the other requirements. And now we have both components that we need to start our first GUI session. Now I just ran the htop command to be able to see the system resource usage. As you see, so far we are still in the safe side. The CPU cores are not being utilized and the memory usage is just 150 meg out of the 4 gigs. So now we are still not consuming anything at all. So now the next step for us is to set up the VNC server. We just need to enter the VNC server command. This will ask us to set up a password because this system does not depend on your username and password to log into the server. You're actually going to use a specific VNC password. We just need to make sure we define a strong password to be used in this case because the only thing you need to log into your server is the password in this case. And we don't need a view only password. We just need the full access. And as you see now, it did start the server for us, but we still need to make some more modifications. So now we need to kill the service that we just started automatically until we make the changes. And then we're going to start again. And we're going to use for this the VNC server dash kill command, and it will kill the first channel because this is the channel that just got started, which is the first one. And we're going to hit enter. Now, once it says the process ID has been killed, now we can go ahead and edit the VNC server startup file. This startup file, we just need to give the VNC server instruction how to connect to our GUI or which GUI we are using. So in here, it will be a different script depending on which desktop environment you decided to go with. In this case, I have a script for the GNOME environment. And as you see, this will run the shell to go into the GNOME session. We just need to copy this. This is only applicable if you have downloaded the desktop environment Ubuntu GNOME desktop. We're going to copy this and we're going to paste it into our configuration file and we're going to save it. Now, once this is ready, we just need to make sure this file is executable because this has a script. By adding the plus X command, we just make sure this file is executable. And finally, we can now start the VNC server, the first channel, and also make sure it's not open to localhost because we will connect over the internet. I'm going to start this and as you see now it said the channel had started and it gave us a location for a log file. So now we can check the listening boards on the system using the netstat command to make sure we have the server listening on our system. As you see right here the Tiger VNC process is listening on board 5901. This is the default board that is used for the VNC connection. Before we try to connect to the system, we must make sure that the firewall will allow us to do so. And by firewall, I mean the AWS firewall on our instance. We have a security group in here that is required to be modified. So we need to go into the launch weather. I'm going to make this big for a second. For our security group, we have inbound rules. And right now it's only limited to the SSH. That's how I'm getting my shell access in here. But we're also going to be connecting using VNC right now. So I'm going to open the inbound rules. And I'm going to open the same board that we verified is board 5901. So we're going to open board TCP 5901. And I'm going to open it from all over the world. So I'm going to choose anywhere. I'm just going to add a note in here that this is for VNC server. Now, once I save my rule, now I made sure the firewall on AWS side will allow me to access my instance using the VNC board. Now, after that, we just need to find a VNC client. So I'm just going to search for Tide VNC. This is a famous free software that is very lightweight and it allows you to VNC to any VNC server. So I'm just going to download it in here for Windows. So now, once we have the client installed, we just need to go back and find the IP address for this instance. We're going to connect using this public IP address and we're going to use this in the remote host and we're just going to add the board in the end 5901. 
And once we do this, we can connect. Now it asks me for the password. I set for the VNC connection. And once I hit this, now I see the GUI for my EC2 instance. As you see, maybe the first time it will show you the welcome. You can just skip through this. As you see, now I have a GUI for my Ubuntu server on AWS. Now, as you see, once we launch the GUI, the HTOP is showing us an increase of over 600 megabytes just to launch the graphical user interface. Now, as we launch more application like Firefox or browsing, the usage will dramatically increase like over a gig without even browsing anything. If you try something more heavy like flash based or YouTube videos, as you see, the number will keep going up, but it's still under control. And this is very easy way to access your Ubuntu server using Tiger VNC client with the GNOME desktop. So now let's move on to the next method, which is using XRDB with the same desktop environment, which is the GNOME desktop. And you might find this useful if you have a restriction in your workplace, maybe you cannot install the VNC client. Or if you are using Windows environment and you just want to use the same remote desktop connection, which is used for Windows environment usually, but you can also port any Linux system to use this utility and you don't have to install any clients using the XRDB session. So first let's kill this VNC server to save up some of our RAM usage. Now we can go ahead and install XRDB. Now this system does not work using a single password. In here, you just need to log into the system using a normal username and password combination. I haven't tried logging to the system using the SSH key in XRDB, but you can also add a simple username to the system and we can try to RDB to our Linux using the same way. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a simple username in our environment. And we're just gonna choose any password for this new user. Now, once we have successfully created our account, now we have our XRDB service running already. So all we need to do right now is to also make sure the firewall and AWS side will allow us to connect using RDB protocol. So I'm gonna go ahead to my security group one more time, and I'm gonna go to my inbound rules, and I'm gonna add one more rule for RDB. There should be already an object in here for RDB. So I'm going to choose this one and I'm also going to open it for anywhere. I'm going to add a small node that this is for XRDB. And once I save, now my firewall and AWS will allow me to go through on board 3389. So all I need to do here is to go into the remote desktop client. This is included in every Windows environment. I'm just going to base the public IP address of my Ubuntu server. I'm gonna go ahead and connect. It's gonna warn me that there's something cannot be verified because this is not a normal Windows environment. So basically the remote desktop doesn't know what that is. So I'm gonna go ahead and click yes. As you see, this message might be a little bit legacy, but it does work. I'm just gonna log in using my account that I just added. And as you see, I'm also able to log into my Linux using a remote desktop client made for Windows. We just need to go through the setup the same like we did before. Now you have a GUI to your Linux server. Now let's try to check the system resources. As you see in here, the memory usage also increased not as much as the VNC server method, but it also added quite a bit. Now let's try to access Firefox, for example. And as you see with something like YouTube, we are spiking at almost 100% CPU usage for a second. And also the RAM usage is really high. So as you see, browsing will always increase the CPU and RAM dramatically, especially in the RDB method. And now we can move ahead to our third method, which is using alternative desktop environment than the official one. And this one is called XFCE4. This one is also lightweight and it does work very well with Tiger VNC. But I'm gonna start by removing the old packages first to make sure we don't cause any conflict and also to make sure we are showing the real impact on this method alone. So I'm gonna remove the Ubuntu GNOME desktop environment 
to prepare for the XFCE4. I'm also going to remove XRDB because we're not going to test that with the XFCE4. And once this is done, we're just going to copy the first line and install the XFCE4 with the goodies. And this XFCE4 desktop environment installed a lot faster compared to the native Ubuntu GNOME desktop environment. We save a lot of time in here. Now we just need to modify the VNC startup file as we did it before we had it set up for the GNOME session. And in here we are using a different desktop environment. So we will use in this case start XFCE4 command. And this is the one that is required to start this GUI. I want to make sure I kill the previous session first if we had one already running. So we didn't return anything, so we didn't have any running session. But I'm going to go ahead and modify the X startup file. And we're just going to remove all the old information that is related to the GNOME desktop environment. And we're going to replace it with the XFCE4 startup file. And we're going to save the file as is. Now we just need to start up our VNC server using the same command VNC server first channel localhost no. Now once the server starts, I'm going to open my tight VNC server one more time and we're still using the same password. But now I'm logging into the XFCE4 GUI which might be a little bit lighter and as you see the memory usage is still really high on this method. But at least this system is a lot more smoother in here compared to the GNOME desktop. I'm able to access Firefox in the same way, but things work noticeably faster on this GUI compared to the other system. We also are able to check our YouTube did not really drive our CPU usage crazy compared to the XRDB. So you can pick whatever desktop environment you would like. And you can use a combination of VNC server or XRDB depending on which client you want to use to connect your server. Now finally, if you want your VNC server to run automatically when you restart your Ubuntu server, just make sure you create a system service for it using the script also included in the paste pen. And this will make sure that every time you reboot your Ubuntu server, it will start the remote desktop service using the Tiger VNC or whatever other VNC server you are using. And that's how you add a graphical user interface or GUI to your Ubuntu server. Thank you for watching.